How much is that doggy in the window? I'm trying to come up with something here. Still looking for a theme song for our segment from cinema vet, Dr. Jamie Ronchetto. Good morning. Good morning. So um, not only is it still uh, National Pet Dental Health Month, yes. is that the official uh, thing? So don't uh-huh. forget to, to, to get your doggies uh, teeth cleaned and kitties. Very important. But uh, we want to talk a little bit because uh, we're kind of in between seasons here. But even still, as as seasons get warmer, as we head toward uh, uh, summer, or even for those who are commuting back and forth or moving somewhere else, traveling with your pets yes. is is something that uh, can either be an okay experience, depending upon your pet's uh, level of comfort, or can, can potentially be a nightmare. So what we want to talk about is reducing the nightmare aspect and and uh, raising the okayness aspect, <laughs> yes. and and I want to talk first about driving with pets, and we'll start with dogs because dogs are sometimes a little bit more um, amenable to traveling than cats, for sure. example. And um, let's talk a little bit because even still, and and I have experienced this firsthand. Dogs can get car sick. Dogs definitely can get car sick. Um, some of it can just be the excitement and anxiety of the car ride itself and other times it truly is motion sickness um but a lot of times we can help that discomfort um especially with the motion sickness feeling with using things similar to what we would use so it is safe to give them dramamine um you'd want to contact your veterinarian to get the proper dosing of that um and then certainly giving them different um anti-anxiety medications if it seems like it's severe that they would need something to calm them down a little bit to be able to just sort of chill out enjoy the ride Um, those are definitely available as well Um, if they're used to riding in a car and used to going places with you obviously it's a lot easier Um, if they never go anywhere then you might want to try to introduce them to that a few times first before you take off on a on a big road trip. Like driving around the block, kind exactly. of getting you, maybe just taking them with you places that you not necessarily leaving me in the car, but places you can go with, or, or yeah. maybe just to drive to a park instead of a walk. I want to ask you really quickly, what is it with dogs loving to stick their heads out the window? Do you have a, like, is there a, a scientific reason <laughs> for that? Or because my dogs absolutely love it. Every dog I've ever had. I I don't know exactly, but I think it's, more to do with all of the smells because their their sense of smell is so much more than ours. Um, that that I think going at at that type of speed that they just get so much stimulation from all the different smells going on. Let's talk about cats because they are a whole. I mean, uh, uh, figuratively and literally, a whole different type of animal to they deal are. with when we travel. First of all. You can't just throw the cat in the back seat like sometimes you can with dogs or whatever. They should be in a carrier, right? They definitely should be in a carrier. And I have had um, some instances where I hear of kitties, oh, they're good car riders, and they just sit on my lap or sit on the chair next to me. But it's really not safe because they're so easy to get underfoot. You know, you would hate to um, have them get in the way of what you're doing and potentially get in a car wreck. So they should definitely always be in a carrier. Um it definitely helps if they are used to their carrier, so that is not as stressful for them. Um, so again, getting them used to their carrier while they're still just in their house, leave the door open for a little while, let them go in and out on their own. Um, and then once it's not as scary of a place, getting them in the carrier, closing the door, and getting them into the car. That's my couple things. First of all, from personal experience, cats get underneath your accelerator or brake and or get up inside the dash. <laughs> so yes. those are things that can happen. If you think it doesn't happen to you, especially kittens, you think, oh, like when I was younger, you know, for, I think bringing a kitten home that happened. And my poor mother almost had a, had an accident because of uh, the cat got out from under me, uh, out from my lap and got underneath the, yeah, it, it was either the accelerator break. And then we had to reach up under the dash to get, get it out. From, so yeah, don't, don't do that. <laughs> and and I, I like the idea though. I was kind of laughing because like, yeah, they'll, they'll go in and out of an open carrier all day long mm-hmm. until you want to actually put them in the carrier right. <laughs> and then they fight mercilessly. But uh, let's talk also, so we talk about car driving. Let's talk about uh, other modes of transportation, especially if you need to take your dog or cat on a flight. Yes. So most flights are going to require some sort of paperwork. Um, a lot of times they would require health certificates and the health certificates need to be within a certain amount of days of your flight time. So that would require you actually coming into the veterinarian, getting your pet 
um, examined so that we can fill out that health certificate saying, yes, they're healthy, yes, they've had all their vaccinations, they're safe for flight, um, and that needs to be done within 10 days of your travel time. Um, it's always a good idea to bring um, a full medical history that you can certainly get from your veterinarian, um, any kind of rabies certificates, things like that. Um, better to be over-prepared than under-prepared, definitely, because you're never quite sure which airlines are going to require what. Um, and certainly, depending on where you're going, if you're going out of the country, different countries are going to require different documentation, um, different testing, that would be certain vaccines and certain blood tests prior to you coming into the country. So definitely you need to think ahead and plan because some of these things could take quite some time. And that's true. So so planning ahead, uh, driving, if your pets are not quite used to it, maybe slow, slowly build them up. Although slow introduction, I, yes. I've, I've I don't know if I've ever met a dog that, like, if, if a car door is open, they don't jump into. So right. <laughs> the cats are definitely different. And also talking about, you know, because a couple of weeks ago, the, the Goldmans, the owners of, um, of this fine radio station, had actually driven uh, their son's cats from Columbus, Georgia to Columbus, Ohio. And you had uh, mentioned some uh, over-the-counter remedies as well. There are over-the-counter remedies that you can provide for dogs and cats if you have a concern about prescription type uh, too heavy a medication. Exactly. Right? There are there are some some more natural alternatives to sedation just to kind of take the edge off, make them calm. And hopefully everybody has a more enjoyable ride. <laughs> Outstanding. Well, if you have questions or need some sort of sedation for your, your pets or need the health certificates if you're traveling or also want general awesomeness as far as level of pet care, uh, Cinema Vet is the place to go. From personal experience, I've brought my, my Daisy down there. We'll bring my other ba babies down there as well. Dr. Jamie Ronchetto at cinemavet.com. And your phone number is... 661 uh, 253 9300. So you can yep. make a reservation. You can also make reservations online once you become a client. Really awesome. So thanks again. Thank Always you. informative. <laughs> so, uh, and have a great, great week.